say a box with your favorite quantum field theory inside it and some amount of handles or switches allowing you to vary parameters of this theory. And let us try to manipulate them and uh, move theory from theory A to theory B. If you follow the uh, properties of uh, observables, um, you will not uh, uh, you will notice that uh, it leads to a concept of um, paratransport with uh, an induced uh, Berry connection on the parameter space. Uh, a rather related concept is an interface, uh, and in this case, I allow my parameters to vary along the spatial direction. So it looks like a, some kind of pi uh, domain wall between two series, allowing them to uh, uh, to talk to each other. And it's also parameterized by uh, uh, both parallel transport and interfaces are parameterized by uh, a path in par parameter space. It's a trajectory that is uh, followed by the parameters of the theory as I uh, vary them. Uh, vary them. Um, uh, so far, it's quite abstract, uh, abstract uh, notion. Um, however, as as long as we add more constraints, uh, things become more symmetric. So I will concentrate on the dimension of n equals two quantum theories. And a uh, peculiarity of this series is that if I put my theory on something, on, on a manifold to uh, with a boundary, I have to choose boundary conditions. And uh, in this case, boundary conditions are uh, not just an arbitrary set, they have a um, uh, structure of a category. Category of the brains. Uh, also, I will concentrate on so called gauge linear sigma models with uh, uh, metric content encoded by a quiver. Uh, and uh, this theory enjoys a call of so called least called duality. And it's, as it falls from the from its name, uh, it's duality between uh, Coulomb and his branch observables. Um, and a uh, peculiarity of this. Situation in that uh, the Coulomb branch tends to live in a realm of uh, symplectic geometry, whereas the Higgs branch belongs more to the world uh, of algebraic geometry. Uh, in particular, on one side, the infrared dynamics, infrared behavior of my theory is usually described by landau Gisbert model with uh, induced hyperpotential. On the other side, it's more like uh, a nonlinear sigma model. Uh, aforementioned um, categories of the brains on one side turn, turn into Foucault-sizal categories, and on the other, on the other side, it's, uh, they are ca derived categories of coherent fields. Uh, uh, the, the, the two concepts uh, I mentioned of parallel transport and uh, an interface um, uh, also find uh, their application in this setting. Uh, and on one side, we usually talk about uh, calculation of interfaces using the algebra of, infra of the infrared. Uh, whereas on the other, uh, the other side, uh, on the other side, we could use so so called uh, brain based restriction rule. Um, and summarizing, uh, we could conclude that um, uh, the Coulomb branch, uh, the, the description of the Coulomb branch. Um, uh, in the in the in the air uh, could be given in terms of solitonic quasi particles, and uh, it's um, technically involved still um, yet uh, uh, a, a physically natural uh, setup. Like, right, we have some uh, some particle theory. We go, we, we are interested in all energy effective dynamics, and we have some amount of quasi particles that somehow interact. Uh, and uh, in this fashion, the East branch seems to uh, stay uh, in the uh, realm of algebraic geometry. So the, the most called co the relative concept is, uh, uh, is, uh, is given by Freem Kai transform and it's still somewhat abstract notion in the algebraic geometry. However, as I said, the, there is this form duality and these two notions have to be on the equal footing. So uh, my object, object for, uh, for today is to try to explain how the uh, pre-emocratons form uh, uh, emerges from this effective 
photon dynamics. And uh, I will go. I will try to go in slow pace over some um, some set of uh, explicit examples and also uh, review um, some basic um, necess necessary tools to uh, discuss uh, applications uh, in these theories. Uh, I mentioned so. This is like my introductory part. And uh, uh, and first, let me review brief, uh, briefly the localization of the Schrodinger equation. Uh, uh, this approach was pioneered by Witten in his paper on uh, more, uh, more theory in, uh, from 1982, and then uh, used and extended uh, by many other people. In, uh, other in other direction applied to different other theories, and the idea is to uh, if, I, if I have some quantum uh, cosmetic quantum mechanics, the idea is to associate the uh, fermionic degrees of freedom with forms of the cotangent bundle uh, to the target space. This allows me uh, to translate the supercharge uh, into differential operator and in principle depending on what is your favorite quantum mechanics theory what uh, structures it preserves it could be any kind of differential uh, for example the round the ball and so on um, uh, and quantum mechanics can be easily oh, sorry quantum field theory can be uh, easily um, uh, Promoted to into this uh, into this framework as well. Uh, this is a usual approach. We split our space time into space and time, uh, and look at our quantum theory as quantum mechanics on the so, so the space of maps from the uh, from the spatial slice uh, to, to the fields. Uh, uh, BPS states in this uh, context context. Are defined uh, as uh, as annihilated by uh, both Q and Q, Q dagger, and the BPS. Uh, the, the, these are some differential equations. So uh, I have some explicit wave functions, and these wave functions span as a part, a subspace in my uh, the four Hilbert space of my system, and I will call this subspace BPS Hilbert space. Uh, it's graded by Fermi uh, number, and um, uh, these BPS states can be identified with harmonic forms on uh, my target space, or using force decomposition with cohomologies of X with respect to super, uh, differential given by Q. Of course, uh, as we go to the quantum field uh, the theory, we, there are many details. Uh, divergences, renormalization, and all this, um, all these packages will uh, come into this game. And uh, however, it's this is inevitable, and we have we will have to deal with uh, those uh, phenomena somehow. Uh, so uh, localization, uh, let's say localization procedure is the four is is simple. Uh, in this context, we just restore the dependence on the Planck constant of the supercharge. Uh, it's split, it explicitly depends on it, and also as um, the PPS Hilbert space does. does. And uh, also, we notice that there is an isomorphism between uh, Hilbert spaces for different pairs of uh, Planck constants, given by conjugation by such such a period. Uh, since BPS uh, Hilbert spaces are isomorphic for different values of uh, Planck constant, we could we could calculate uh, calculate it at our favorite value, and our favorite value is the semi classical limit when I tend h bar to zero, so I uh, uh, I care only about classical vacuum and some instanton jumps or perturbative instanton jumps. Uh, between them, and this uh, comes uh, uh, in uh, um, uh, precise formulation in in terms of, uh, of a package of uh, small small Witten complex. So I 
uh, define the very complex the the, the, the very uh, very complex vector space um, uh, spanned by approximate wave, wave functions that are just Gaussian computation around classical vacuum, and there is a differential or supercharge uh, uh, this complex and its matrix uh, matrix coefficients are. Uh, saturated by its instant on contributions. And the BPS Hilbert space in this uh, set can be defined as the homology of this MSW complex. Uh, so we will uh, discuss um, uh, uh, quantum field, field theories and uh, it's gauge linear signal, it will be gauge linear signal models and it's a useful way to a useful way to uh, define symmetric content is to use quivers. And this is a standard identification for any quiver gauge theory. So I have uh, a quiver nodes, two quiver nodes I associate with the multiplets, two uh, oriented er arrows I associate chiral, chiral multiplets properly, properly charged. And there are also boxes, small boxes usually. Uh, referred to as um, framing nodes, and the framing nodes I just had uh, associated additional flavor symmetries. Uh, all this, uh, all, all, all these fields come uh, uh, come with uh, additional uh, additional parameters, in particular for the uh, vector multiplets. Uh, to vector multiplets, I assign also phi Leopold's terms and topological angles, the dimensional topological angles, denoted theta. To chiral multiplets, uh, I assign, uh, I assign uh, three uh, three masses, uh, complex masses that can be divided in real and imaginary part. And uh, to define for the, uh, this additional flavor of symmetries, I uh, take usually usual gauge degrees of freedom, freeze them, and to some of, of some of scalar fields assign uh, assign uh, expectation values. Uh, and this expectation varies our additional parameters. Uh, we will consider uh, B-twisted theory. So uh, my BPS wave functions are annihilated by Q and Q bar, Q, QB and QB bar. Uh, and also uh, during quotization, I acquire additional first order constraint that represents Gauss law. So physical states are also annihilated by this uh, theoretical. G. Uh, uh, I would like to put my uh, theory on the strip wall sheet. So it's, it's so it's a strip. It's infinite uh, upwards and downwards along the uh, temporal direction, and has finite width along the spatial direction x one. Say width m. Um, uh, it, 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 the, strip ha, uh, the strip has two boundaries, uh, left and right, and I have two, two boundary conditions, say, brain A and brain B, and they, um, right. And uh, also, I uh, choose some interface so, uh, in the box, so I'm varying parameters of my theory from the left-hand side to the right-hand side along some path in parameter space. Uh, since uh, parameters are different, uh, parameters are different from the left end and the right end. And in principle, these the brain categories D, D and D prime are different, and there is uh, no naive way to compare them. Uh, and uh, at this point, this interplay between interfaces and parallel transport becomes very handy. Because on the one hand, I can define uh, BPS Hilbert space for, for the ch choice of one recognition, say, and B, and some interface between them, uh, J. Uh, and uh, we could say that this uh, Hilbert, this is vector space, graded vector space, right? Uh, it is isomorphic to the space of morphisms between the hologram uh, for brain A. Uh, and brain B. Uh, this uh, hologram action is, is actually uh, the um, uh, the way of, of parallel transport my brain inside uh, inside the uh, in, uh, in the parameter space. So uh, you can imagine this as the following: as I have 
take it to my brain A and push it towards brain B so that they uh, become, uh, belong to the same uh, category and on the on its uh, root it captures all all the contributions from the interface. So this beta is a parallel transport transport functors. So it maps category D to D prime, and this is a, a way to define it. In principle, uh, uh, the, uh, this brain uh, parallel transport was uh, uh, well. It, it still is a rather popular topic in. Uh, over the last key, then this is just another way to define it. Um, uh, so, uh, how to define the interface explicitly? Uh, here's an example of a simple charge for abelian uh, linear sigma model. Uh, as you see, it explicitly depends on the parameters I mentioned the topological angle, the phi parameter, and masses. And following the uh, prescription of the uh, of the uh, written paper about the algebra of the infrared, to introduce an interface, we just substitute these constant parameters by functions uh, varying along the spatial direction. And in the parameter space, they uh, the uh, forward trajectory trajectory p. Uh, if you don't like uh, showing your picture much, uh, you could use um, alternatively uh, just your favorite path integral calculations. Uh, to do so, uh, the, 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 there is a small modification of the action in, in order. Uh, here you see how, how to modify the action to include the uh, the um, the contribution from the interface in uh, parameters, the five parameter and theta. Uh, after this modification, the action does not preserve initial and equals to uh, supersymmetry, rather now it preserves uh, just decreased. Um, uh, uh, let me also briefly review the uh, subject of uh, the his gone uh, uh, he, his gone duality. Uh, so in my university models, I will have uh, vacuum and vacuum are described by uh, canonically by two types of terms: D term and F term. Again, here I uh, would go through only through the case of abelian, abelian, abelian dish series for, for simplicity. Uh, and I have substituted the right hand side. Uh, usually it's, it's zero, but I used all big of h bar to remind, uh, remind ourselves that I require uh, the uh, working expectation values of my field to, to satisfy this uh, uh, relations only up to uh, quantum corrections that are of order h bar. Uh, looking at uh, the F term, we notice that uh, uh, the, uh, the scalars corresponding to the uh, gauge multiplet and pair multiplets do not do not acquire expectation values simultaneously, and in principle, the term that then defines uh, which which of the which of the fields um, acquire this expectation value. So when R uh, the this is a five parameter. Uh, when it's large, uh, we see that the chiral, the scale of the chiral multiple requires expectation value, and this is the usual description of the heat range. On the contrary, uh, when R is small, and to be more precise, it's of order of, of H bar, uh, the opposite situation happens, and uh, the uh, scalar in the gauge multiple requires expectation value. Um, uh, and this is the usual description of the Coulomb branch. Uh, so very schematically, I could draw the phase diagram of my theory this way. So when I uh, go far away from zero, I get these branches, and in some region uh, around the zero, I have a Coulomb branch. Um, 
uh, and uh, the descriptions were and the separation between two branches. This branch is quite uh, conditional. So uh, as I as I said, we have uh, an isomorphism between uh, uh, BPS Hilbert spaces for different values of each bar. So if I take some uh, some uh, particular value of if I parameter, I, I have an isomorphism between uh, between the uh, because of the spaces uh, belonging to Higgs branch and the Coulomb branch, and in general, we could say that uh, these uh, these descriptions are isomorphic. We could call this uh, a quadratic Higgs Coulomb duality. And to stress that uh, the, the description are are somewhat different, uh, here here you could see uh, examples of. Um, uh, of differential equation uh, um, describing the uh, uh, describing the uh, vacuum field configuration. So equations were quite different, and here WLG is the effective one loop generated superpotential. And as you can see, it explicitly depends sometimes uh, on the cutoff cut parameter lambda. So equations are. Uh, Somewhat different, however, this some duality predicts that the uh, our BPS Hilbert spaces we will derive from them are isomorphic. And let's see how it works. We'll uh, see how it works in the example of CP1. Uh, CP1 is an abelian model, uh, abelian gauge linear sigma model with two fields, phi one, phi, uh, two chiral fields, phi one, phi two, both charged in the same way, say charge plus one. And it's good variant because I have uh, assigned to the masses parameter mu1 and mu2. And from a, the neutron constraint, we see that phi1 and fields phi1 and phi2 never become zero simultaneously. So I could use phi1, phi2 as homogeneous coordinate on CP1. This is my effective superpotential. Uh, it explicitly depends on the complexified the five parameter T, and the vacuum uh, are defined as a critical point of the superpotential. This is a quadratic equation. So, in principle, I have two vacuum uh, that can be approximated. Uh, in this vacuum, the values of the scalar in the uh, gauge multiple, uh, the gauge multiple can be approximated by the values of mu1 and mu2. However, uh, since the very expression for the analogous book of superpotential, I have the log, the log is multivalued. Uh, so in the W plane, uh, the uh, set of uh, the set of um, critical values splits into series. So W star 1, W star 2. Each one is uh, just uh, 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 it, it's just uh, infinite cover of each of the vacuum. So uh, this vector A is uh, exactly I u1 minus u2. So you, you will get this expression if you uh, shift the log to another sheet by 2 pi i. Um, uh, the uh, uh, Equation for the uh, vacuum field, field configuration. This case is a Hamiltonian equation. It's an uh, equation for Hamiltonian flow. The Hamiltonian in this case is the real part of superpotential. And since I have just one uh, complex field sigma described in its phase space, this equation is integrable. The solution, uh, the solution is represented by a king. Um, by a sol solution has a form of a king or each called part the domain wall of finite weeks. Uh, and it's um, uh, it's stable or exists only uh, if and only if um, the, uh, the deep, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't say uh, uh, in the W plane, the, uh, the solution, solution is uh, represented by straight segment interpolating between Corresponding, uh, corresponding uh, critical values. So this uh, solution is um, stable if only if uh, the difference between these critical values is a uh, real and non-positive number. So, uh, so to describe the uh, structure of the spectrum in the, of the solution spectrum in this theory, we could just uh, connect any two points in this uh, diagram and uh, write when 
right, right, down, uh, right down the responsible charge and uh, right down the constraints when this, when this uh, condition is satisfied. So we will get this table and this table one goes to one means that uh, um, I go from vector one to vector one so that uh, I start from somewhere somewhere here and and again in the series w star one. So uh, what happens uh, on the uh, other side or in the dish linear sigma model? Again, I have to vacuum uh, to vacuum uh, corresponding to uh, actually to the uh, if if I think of my sigma one as as a ring of sphere, right? It has two poles, and the, this vector exactly these two poles. Um, uh, also, let us consider a constant, um, a constant mole, a constant zero moles in the neighbor. In, in each vacuum, uh, these uh, these moles are ma made out of little um, mesonic fields, so that is phi one or phi two or phi two or phi one, depending on in what vacuum I'm sitting in. Uh, the requirement is that the uh, the field that is uh, sits in the pole uh, acquires expectation value. In terms of this uh, little mesonic, uh, mesonic fields, uh, the uh, uh, approximate supercharge, uh, uh, effective supercharge. And each vacuum has the following form. And this form uh, corresponds to the Hamiltonian describing a particle uh, confined in the, in, a, in the plane spanned by complex parameter n and with a turned on magnetic field perpendicular to it. Uh, well, description of the uh, particle in the plane with turned on magnetic field is. Uh, Standard is the textbook problem. Uh, it's described by Landau levels, and we can say that our BPS states are lowest Landau, uh, are described by lowest Landau levels. Uh, low, low, sorry, the lowest Landau level. Uh, the lowest Landau level is infinitely degenerate. Uh, we can um, grade uh, different states. Uh, uh, by non-negative integer angular momentum L. And in principle, the VSW function uh, depends on arbitrary analytic function of M. Uh, also, we could say that the lowest on the level because Hilbert space could be identified with this uh, with this ring, and corresponding spectrum spectrum of this ring is uh, an affine plane. Uh, and uh, sorry, I didn't say that uh, the, the fact that this um, meson field is infinitely degenerate means that. It creates a condensate, so it's natural to draw this uh, this spectrum and uh, meson condensate plane or meson condensate right. And uh, this solution described the first uh, the first two rows on, of my solid spectrum table. So for each vacuum, I have uh, infinite degenerate solutions. And this degeneracy is a month one correspondence by uh, with, the, uh, with the degeneracy by uh, angular momentum. Uh, also, we have another solutions, uh, more interesting one, um, ones. Uh, to, see, to see this solution there, uh, let, let me introduce a um, uh, polarization of my fields in terms of all their angles. And if I take my uh, differential equation described in this uh, vacuum field configurations uh, and I massage it, massage this uh, equation a little bit, uh, I will find a single equation for the other angle theta. Uh, this is perfect sort of uh, equation. Uh, it has it's quite simple to solve it. We will get, we will get sort of solution of finite width uh, or finite, yeah finite width, and uh, in principle, so the current solution. Um, uh, I could depict them on this uh, on the Riemann sphere, where again my vacuum corresponds to poles or to south and north poles, uh, and uh, some solution represents flows flowing from one pole to another one. Uh, 
and direction uh, direction of the of the flow is dictated by this difference of uh, imaginary parts of masses for my fields phi one phi two and this uh, direction is exactly exactly this constraint from my from my uh, solid spectrum table uh, also if I quantize um, properly the zero zero is your mode, uh, this your mode uh, of my solitons, I will get this uh, quantization, uh, quantization conditions. So we conclude that soliton spectrum for Higgs and Coulomb branches matches. Uh, so Higgs Coulomb, Higgs -Coulomb duality works in this case, as, as we hope, hoped to, or expected. Um, uh, so, um, Going to the next example, let me first uh, digress a little bit and mention a uh, slightly simpler concept than the category. It's a growth in group. Uh, it's a homomorphic growth uh, category to some type of space, and in physically it's given by partition function. In our case, it's a disk partition function. So I have some disk, uh, well, I have drawn it in form of some kind of vase or vial, uh, and uh, I put uh, my theory on this disk. And since it has a boundary, I have to choose some boundary condition. It's a break A. And uh, this partition function has a four, has an integral form. Uh, and the concept of parallel transport or interface is also simplified in this set setting. So uh, uh, to calculate the partition function of interface, we do as usual. We take first we, we first perform weak rotation, then uh, compactify our temp te uh, uh, former uh, uh, temporal direction into the therm thermal circle. So my uh, strip becomes a cylinder that I could glue, uh, glue, or a pipe that I could, could glue to my disk and get a new disk uh, with some di different, uh, with, uh, with some different uh, for some different value parameters p two and some different maybe boundary conditions a prime. So the partition fun uh, my, my uh, index of partition function. Uh, well, Maybe it should be better to call it index of my interface uh, that performs this linear transformation between vectors of partition function. Uh, alternatively, I could say that uh, my partition function is a flat section of a very connection. Uh, it's connection in uh, parameters parameters of my theory t or or mu. Uh, and uh, for for two dimensional in the course of the theory, this pair connection is often called also TT star connection. Uh, in the case of in the discussed case of CP1, uh, this partition function is just a Bessel function. And actually, at this point, we could use usual tools to uh, describe uh, describe uh, spectra of my series, like spectral networks or Alternatively, I could uh, study, uh, perform WQB analysis of this differential equation. So I have uh, many uh, WQB lines. Uh, for, for the case of CP1, it's uh, depicting this picture. Uh, so it's a uh, an infinite spiral uh, uh, converging to singularity zero. And, it's, uh, it, uh, and this like, B lines corresponds to, uh, correspond to stock jumps or uh, solid in contribution. So if I go towards zero, I intersect my infinitely many uh, double QB lines, and each such intersection corresponds to one of the solitons I have uh, mentioned earlier. Um, uh, now uh, we move to our next example. Uh, next example is a quick transition. Uh, it's again uh, a billion a billion gauge linear sigma model. In this case, I have four fields, four, four parallel fields. I split, I split them into groups. One charged positively, another one charged negatively, or I could uh, briefly uh, encode the metric content of my theory in this, uh, in this um, query. Uh, 
so let us uh, organize uh, the, uh, this car systems into matrix in a matrix M. Uh, the matrix M has the following properties. First, it's uh, degenerate, and uh, it's null space given by vector phi one, phi two, and this is a dual null space given by uh, vector phi three, phi four. So assume our phi parameter is positive. Then again, uh, from the digital constraint, I could I could see that phi one, phi two never become zero simultaneously. So I could either use phi one or phi one, phi two is a homogeneous coordinate of CP one, and M is just a fiber about this about this line. Uh, so this pair M and L uh, perform um, uh, canonical blow up resolution resolution of conic singularity. And if I have R negative, I have another resolution uh, where the base is uh, the role of the base, uh, the, the role of fields comprising the base are played by fields phi, phi 3 and phi 4. And we could say that x plus is uh, right resolution and left, and x minus is uh, left resolution. And I will be interested in the path that inflates between these two regions where uh, if I parameter is negative toward the uh, region where the phi parameter is positive. And according to my prescription, the corresponding parallel transport factor uh, performs a co uh, coin fold transition for derived category of coherent shifts on x minus to derived category of x plus. And peculiarity of this uh, power transport uh, is that I, I inevitably I will have to go through this funny region where uh, my keys branch description breaks down, and I have to substitute the description by uh, Chrome branch description. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is an expression for the heat bridge partition function on the disk, and we easily recognize that it's uh, just a balanced representation of a balanced integral for the hypergeometric function. So, by choosing different integration cycles, we get different sets of um, hypergeometric functions. Uh, the parameter space is parameterized by this complexified phi parameter t. And it's better to actually complexify it, uh, com uh, also not completely exponentiate it, uh, since the uh, argument of the uh, hypergeometric function is uh, exponentiated. So this is a sphere uh, with three marked points, usually usual marked points for uh, hypergeometric functions, u1 and infinity. And my path uh, represents this green path. Uh, uh, interpolating from zero to infinity. Uh, we can notice that uh, near zero, only the fir first two uh, first two functions converge. Uh, this means that this function z gamma one, z gamma two is the usual uh, the usual basis of two dimensional basis of solution of hypergeometric equation. Around zero, uh, and similar situation is for infinity. In that case, I have uh, the basis z gamma three and z gamma four. And uh, this uh, problem about uh, parallel transport from zero to infinity is well known problem in mathematical physics. It's an uh, analytic confirmation of hypergeometric function outside the unit circle. Uh, sorry, I didn't say that indeed the unit circle is. Uh, is a game that uh, is, is a locus where the five parameters become zero, and where I have this. Um, uh, I, I should say something about uh, Coulomb branch. And in principle, we, uh, what we will get is a continuification of this break part transport, so we say it's continuification of analytic continuation of hypergeometric functions. Um, uh, to describe what happens on the Chrome branch, let me first uh, uh, introduce the Chrome branch uh, partition function. It's uh, in this case, it's uh, just a Riemann representation of hypergeometric functions. It explicitly depends on the integration cycle, and uh, the uh, and the best choice of uh, integration cycles for such integrals are uh, usually less symbols. 
uh, Lagrangian, uh, Lagrangian manifolds, and uh, the, uh, also the symbol of, uh, symbols represent um, uh, exceptional basis in the highest ideal here. So in this in this in this description, we, we could uh, literally see the brains uh, how the, how they uh, how they really look like in, in the um, uh, terms of uh, field X. To, to describe this column branch, uh, I, I have to zoom in into that uh, orange uh, orange uh, um, circle. Uh, in, uh, in the previous slide, and when I uh, uh, zoom in, I, it looks like I stretch it on my sphere towards the poles. Uh, and I will have the Kuber description with a bunch of uh, WTB lines winding against spiraling into the spiraling towards, uh, towards singularities. Uh, in principle, uh, if you Cut this uh, sphere into hemispheres along this gray line. You will get um, uh, two, two, two hemispheres with a picture of uh, double TB lines uh, analogous to double TB lines of the CP1 uh, of the CP1 keys. Again, just one spiral. Uh, it's an indication of the fact that when I go towards the Higgs branch. Towards the left or towards, towards the, to the right, the, the base of my uh, uh, the base of my resolution is CP one. And as I move uh, along this uh, along this sphere and across various double TV lines, the uh, topo topology of my electric symbols changes. And uh, each such change of topology corresponds to some. Uh, uh, is, it can be described by some Spox matrix or uh, coefficients of the Spox matrix. Matrices uh, are described by uh, solitude distributions, and I can uh, reconstruct the uh, quantum numbers of my solitons from this from these coefficients. Um, uh, and I would like to concentrate on these two uh, two, two large symbols L four and L uh, L one. And uh, decompose uh, them back in terms of uh, in terms of these branch partition functions. Uh, these are these two expressions, and um, looking at them, we, we notice the following fact. Well, the, the, uh, we could make the following observation that this uh, five factors, chi, mass squared, and so on, uh, correspond to insertion of a Wilson line of Particular charge or to the, into the boundary of my of my disk of my disk. So in principle, this uh, this uh, this symbols correspond to uh, just with some lines of zero charge uh, on two sides, and uh, this one this one corresponds to with some charge uh, to with some line of charge for one on two sides, and I can translate this into bundles uh, on its. Uh, in the first case, it's just pullback of the structure sheaf of uh, my base CP1 uh, on both sides. Uh, and uh, in the second case, it's, um, it's for the second brain L4, it's pullback of 4, 1 uh, and O minus 1. Here I have minus 1 because my fields 5P and 5, 4 are charged negatively with respect to my D1. And we, and, and we can see how. how uh, how the power transport works. It takes some uh, some sheaves, uh, springs, uh, and parallel transport. Uh, during the parallel transport, when I have to switch uh, switch his branch to his branch to column branch, it uh, trans translates them to the electric symbols and then translates them back. Uh, uh, we can compare this to the various uh, to other methods of computation, and we will find that this L1 and L4 are uh, fixed one duals of uh, invariant braids used by Herbs Herb for uh, and Page uh, in, in the application of uh, the great restriction rule that I. Uh, Mentioned it briefly at the very beginning. And if we look at the math papers, we will find that this transition between sheaves on the x plus and x minus is governed by 
Fourier Mukai transform with this uh, particular kernel that is structure sheep of uh, locus where m plus and equals n minus. Sorry, here it should be m transport, transported, transposed. So, um, uh, well, uh, one, one peculiarity I, I, I skipped is that uh, I have done this all. Uh, uh, all this calculation only for partition functions. So in principle, it's all valid for only for K series. So in principle, in this relation, I, I should have substituted this sheets by their K, K, K series classes. Uh, you, could, uh, you could ask why it works for categories itself. Um, and uh, the reason is uh, that I have to actually uh, codify all my expressions. The codification me implies that for algebraic expression like this, where uh, various terms in this uh, in this relation are contribution of various uh, solid forms, I should substitute, substitute by complexes and equality is uh, corresponding corresponding derived equivalent. For example, this uh, th this term implies that. Uh, it means that I have a wave function uh, in the background of two solitonic particles, x for three and x in four. Uh, derived equivalence uh, in this case is, uh, is um, uh, it's, well, it's governed by uh, by differentials of my complexes and uh, complexes and by uh, the differentials um, are, are, are can be described as scattering of solitons. Uh, for example, uh, the, the, this pair of solitons uh, on one side scattered through vertex into the, the soliton on the other side. Uh, and in principle, it's uh, hard to calculate these vertices because in this case I have to solve, um, uh, well, nonlinear non differential equation of second uh, into variables and it's uh, uh, it is uh, hard, uh, even despite the, uh, it is known that this, uh, this vertices satisfy uh, A infinity L infinity relations when the boundary vertices are involved. Uh, however, it remains the, uh, the problem, the problem of um, uh, calculation of these vertices from the, uh, from the basic principles open. Uh, we could, uh, for our purposes, we have just a, just a small set of such vertices, and we could use uh, various uh, various tricks. Uh, in this case, uh, it's uh, we, we could just try to calculate the numerically. Uh, this is a result of such numerical simulation. Um, uh, this plot is for this density function. Uh, y1 to y4 are uh, vacuum values of fields. So when you see uh, that uh, row becomes zero in this plot, or you see dark or black region in this plot, it means that the field is in one of the vacuum, therefore vacuum and fields in one of them. And this uh, humps uh, correspond to soliton cores. In that course, and you see that the, this, this, this is a description of this scattering process involving two vertices. Well, uh, and there is an alternative way to calculate uh, to calculate this well to predict these vertices using uh, bootstrapping them from a requirement that my uh, interfaces are uh, the, the BPS spaces corresponding to interfaces are invariant. Uh, invariant of homotopic deformations of my interface uh, parallel transport path. Uh, another question uh, you could have asked uh, is, uh, is the following. So uh, I have uh, presented, uh, well, I tried to present a calculation of uh, the result of parallel transport for brains. Uh, and then I said, well, let's look at the math paper, so, so, to, to the math literature, and try to, so, to find the corresponding Fourier Mukai transform for them. Uh, more, more, uh, it's almost guaranteed that uh, we, will, we will be able to, uh, 
defined for your Mukai transform for each such parent trans uh, transport by Orlov's theorem. Uh, the, 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 the tells us that under rather gen generic uh, general circumstances, uh, each uh, factor on the derived categories is a some Fourier Mukai transform with some kernel. Uh, however, we could try to predict uh, the form of Fourier Mukai kernel from physics. Uh, let us look at again neutral methods. So neutral methods are just computations or monomials of fields having uh, 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 having a net like a charge zero. So I could take phi one or phi two or this combination. I have dropped uh, dropped away the uh, the first four, four combinations because they are uh, non holomorphic. They have faults. So this is good. Um, Masonic degree of freedom uh, only around vacuum where the pole of this expression ex uh, acquires um, acquires uh, expectation value. On the other hand, the holomorphic, the, uh, holomorphic combinations are okay uh, globally, and moreover, they describe the uh, uh, zero modes uh, Zero mode deformations of my street of my string DPS states from their equilibrium states. Uh, since it's uh, these are neither methods, they produce a condensate. So uh, they produce a uh, condensate of this of the field of the field of this matrix F. Moreover, since uh, it's um, it, it is a constant, uh, uh, constant degree of freedom. I mean, it's a constant deformation and constant mode, uh, deformation mode. Uh, the values of M uh, of the matrix M on the left brain and the right brain should be equal for the state to be BPS. BPS. So I uh, I have to include in the to the my brain function uh, this delta function and uh, the um, kernel. Of my free Mukai transform is just structure sheep of the uh, support locals of my delta function. So in this way, we could uh, predict predict uh, what kernels we will need to descri describe our uh, transform. Uh, I'm a bit uh, a bit earlier. Uh, then I planned. Uh, so my uh, last example, uh, I'm going a bit faster than I planned. So, so my last example, sorry, it's, it's uh, has just just a single slide, and it uh, refers to purified braid action. Uh, we usually uh, consider. Uh, we should consider the break action in the context of the uh, conformal blocks in WW model. And uh, we could use 3D mirror symmetry, uh, to, uh, could use 3D, uh, 3D mirror symmetry to relate uh, this type of conformal block um, uh, to engage in your sigma model with a query given by this long. Well, this is this long quiver. So, so, so such theory I call uh, S M M minus M. Um, the uh, uh, vacuum in this theory are uh, well. It's a it's a quiver dish theory. Uh, in particular, it's uh, even the Kajima quiver variety. Uh, it's it's target free. Um, and the, in the in the vacuum as a uh, in, in such series as we uh, just told us in the previous talk, uh, are described can be described as crystals. However, in this uh, in this uh, key, the crystals are uh, pre prevented from growing in the third direction, so they're just uh, flat dimensional crystals that can be uh, packed nicely in uh, young diagrams. Uh, the uh, 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 the the braid action, uh, the braid action on the parameters of the micro, of say, microformal block, actually, uh, 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 
transports uh, transports the theory outside the outside the uh, cyclic chamber to some another chamber where uh, one of the parameters one of the five parameters becomes negative. So this situation is quite similar to the uh, to the conifold case, where, where, where uh, and, the, and it actually generalizes the conifold case because in the conifold case which have like just just a single parameter, and in this case we have some set of additional parameters that, that remain unchanged. Uh, similarly, absolutely similar to the conifold case, uh, we will have uh, transition to a region uh, where. Uh, initial uh, his bridge description uh, doesn't work. We have to switch to uh, effective on our book model. Uh, and in this case, we could treat it as a melting of my crystal. Fortunately, in this case, uh, melting is somewhat small, just a, uh, like, like it's uh, drawn here, just a single, single cell. Um, could call migrating cell uh, get, gets melted from the crystal body. Uh, and uh, in general, this uh, and also I could I, I could uh, use a, a certain isomorphy to map this chamber to uh, while while reflect, reflected uh, ch chamber where my parameters are well reflected. So, so uh, th indeed, this this is transition again from from cyclic chamber to the again to the cyclic chamber, and this is kind of a hysteresis while my steering its crystallic phase go goes along this hysteresis uh, loop uh, through partially liquid uh, liquid state, and this performs some. Uh, so some trivial, trivial transformation that we also can calculate explicitly using absolutely the same, the same, uh, the same uh, tools we use to calculate uh, the Riemann-Kai transform for uh, for the conifold uh, for, for the conifold transition. So, and we will again looking at the mass literature, we will find. There, this uh, the Korean Kai transform calculated in this way coincides with the uh, Korean Kai with the catechified action of the braid group on cotangent uh, uh, spaces to the flag varieties. And uh, in this case, we don't even need to check if our Korean Kai transform indeed satisfies the say braid relations. Uh, because it's mathematical theorem uh, that, it, that it does satisfy. Uh, however, for, for us interpretation uh, interpretation of this break relations relations slightly different. For us, it's uh, gain invariance of the uh, of the BPS hyperspace for my uh, for our interface uh, with respect to homotopic deformations of the parallel transport path. So uh, uh, let me conclude. Uh, I try to explain uh, how the uh, solitonic dynamics and the algebra of the infrared could, could be incorporated to uh, could be translated into the Fourier Mokai transforms transform Fourier Mokai transforms in uh, on the Higgs branch. Uh, these branches of various theories, and it seems to be a successful application. Uh, so we can, so we can uh, now calculate our favorite for impact kernel. We didn't know using this uh, the algebra of the infrared, and in principle, it has various further uh, further possible applications and uh, related to various. Open questions. So, for example, as I said, there is an open problem to co to calculate the um, vertices uh, vertices for soliton scattering from uh, from the basic principles. Uh, however, we could try to reverse engineer the 
this uh, uh, this sort of scattering sample just if we if we know the degree of gravity transform and we know uh, and we can perform calculation in the algebraic geometry so on result from algebraic geometry we could try to reverse engineer the samples of course it's uh, applicable to all the problems related to the particular break group like not invariants, the D manifold invariants, uh, possibly mapping class repetition of the mapping class group. And uh, also, in principle, we try to. Uh, I have mentioned uh, the uh, melting of the crystals and the crystals and melting of the crystals, and it's directly related to the. Um, uh, to. Uh, to, 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 to melting crystal model discussed by way. Uh, so in principle, we could try to codify, uh, develop some codified representations of BPS algebras. So let me stop here. Okay, thank you, Dima. Um, now time for questions or comments from the audience. Hey, Dima. Um, is it possible to say a bit more about how, how you see melting crystals fitting into this? So, um, in, in, in particular, how like categorified braid representations or like these these sort of interfaces will... Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I have slides slide for this. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, it's, uh, it's this chain of... Uh, I mean, this chain of dualities, right? Uh, so uh, we identify the uh, the formal mm -hmm. block with just our glass money, and then uh, it's near dual to this theory, and then there is one Mach map to to flag variety. And if I uh, if I uh, start to uh, look at fixed points of uh, of this theory. Alpha, uh, I mean the, I mean this is a queer variety, so I just uh, look yeah. for fixed points, and I will find that they are uh, given by these uh, diagrams. Uh, actually, there are two diagrams because I have two framings, but I could uh, transpose it and reflect, so they form together a single field of dimension n times n minus n. And this uh, diagram responds, I think, to the Schubert cell of, of the Grassmannian. And alternatively, I could translate it to the spin, uh, spin uh, arrangement uh, corresponding to the... Uh, corresponding yeah. To the, yeah. So, uh, and as I, as I uh, go further, I will find that uh, that in the uh, when, when I sorry, I say it somewhere here, uh, maybe uh, so, so the identification between parameters of the series is like this. So when I try to braid uh, two parameters of the two, two, two punctures of my conformal block, I will actually go through this reflection where I reflect one of the five parameters. And we could see that it's uh, it's um, uh, well it's uh, if I go if I go to, to this point I will I, I will see I mean just just uh, simple calculation that my theory splits in a directly quadrifold uh, and some amount of free. So the, 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 this gauge group corresponds to uh, technically it's it's literally uh, looks like this. So I uh, when I when I braid the conform uh, the conformal blocks uh, only uh, since uh, our matrix preserves uh, weight spaces. Uh, I actually braid only these two conform can braid only these two conformal blocks, and you could see that uh, these conformal blocks in the terms of diagrams are differ by differ by just single single cell. Uh, 
Uh, so, so it sort of fits, but I guess I'm asking, like, do, do, do crystals add anything new to, 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 the, to the picture? Do they, like, do they help you understand something better than, than before? And, and you're, you're talking about like, like BPS spectra and much fancier objects than, than just how vacua move around. Well, uh, I mean, the, 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 the fancy because uh, in the sense that you could uh, say something about categories. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But in such a restrict, restricted system, a lot of things actually encoded in the terms of uh, in, uh, in the behavior of vacuum. So uh, an answer to your question is somewhat tricky. <laughs> okay. Uh, in, in, in principle, you, you could see that uh, the, when I have this crystal and I try to, to braid something, I, you would see that the part of the crystal stays intact and only, only, only little parts melts. And this little part corresponds exactly to Cronicle. Then you can use your knowledge about how uh, solitons work in the case of Cronifold, uh, work in this case. And, that, and, and in principle, you could translate it literally like uh, in the arrangement of this um, lines in this plug decomposition and see that. That indeed your your yeah, the uh, your Fourier characters uh, the, the kernel of your your Fourier characters fold responds to the structure sheet of uh, specific uh, specific yeah, the, the thing you're, you're you're flapping yeah um, okay Th thanks okay uh, are, are any other questions. Okay, then I have a question. This is that, uh, well, could, could you elaborate a little bit on the comparison with the literature in particular? Like, uh, well, this is a little big question, but Kentaro has papers about the parallel transport and then try to interpret at the category level, et cetera. Yes. So some of the ingredients uh, do sound familiar. So could you highlight, like, could you a little bit be specific as to this part, like this part is done by the literature, but this part is new by you, et cetera? Uh, yes, yeah, so, is, so like a, for example, is a kernel of Uri Mukai kernel, is that the new pirate or like a uh, uh, Well, it's uh, the whole really, scenery or some specific result or anyway, that's what I want, might want to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so using this great restriction rule, uh, you, you can see uh, what happens to the, uh, to the, um, uh, sheaves as you as you perform this uh, parallel transport. Um, but I think you are skipping this intermediate part where you could translate them to to the um, uh, 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 to the brain uh, to the uh, left left symbols or the brains of the. Uh, in the on the Coulomb branch. Uh, also, also it's hard to see what is what is the kernel. So uh, after you have calculated after you have calculated this parallel transport and know that uh, your so, so you have some uh, abstract uh, abstract functor that. Uh, so you could look at this in the following way. Uh, you have performed some calculation and you have um, uh, some abstractor that acts on your sheets uh, in a particular way. So it maps this P star of O to P star of O and P star of one to P star of O of minus one, right? Uh, then you could, uh, you're asking uh, what, is, uh, what is the forever card transform for, for, for for this for this functor, uh, on one hand, uh, you could look through math literature and find 
if people have well, there are some example calculation uh, of um, calculations of results of this uh, uh, of various uh, Fourier kernels on various varieties. So you could 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 look through these examples and find that uh, this particular example is calculated and the uh, Fourier kernel is known. For, for I mean for, for this particular. Uh, sorry, so is it that people don't know the Fourier Mukai kernel, but nevertheless know the parallel transfer of, uh, as a... No, no, it's... A, it's Somehow, no. if you want to construct a functor from category to category, you need to know the kernel for Fourier Mukai transform, so... Uh, the the Fourier, Fourier Mukai kernel is no. Okay, so I see, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so you, uh, you have, uh, like, constructed this functor, uh, for uh, for sheaves and you would like uh, and you would like to know uh, what what is the uh, what is the uh, corresponding Fourier Mukai transform. Uh, so maybe let me. Uh, oh yeah, I can <laughs> <clarify. laughs> So the Fourier Mukai kernel is needed if you want to express this functor in this geometric way, uh -huh. the left lower left uh, diagram way. Yes. But if you use the gauge linear sigma model, you don't need it. It's embedded into the bigger category. So it's just what you have to, you just have to know uh, lower left x plus to gauge linear sigma model category and then go down to the x minus. You don't need this. You, you don't need to express the functor in this way. It goes through a somewhat bigger things than x plus times x minus. I see. Yeah. Oh, I see. So that was yeah. known before. And then kind of he makes it, I see. So he makes the smaller makes thing. It, it makes see. it more explicit or more geometric. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. But and, and another thing is that uh, in to, to find the grade restriction rule, you actually need this Lagrangians. Mm how to trans, how to uh, deform it, right. So, <laughs> but actually uh, in practice, it is very difficult. Even I'm still working on the gauge group U2. <laughs> this is very non-trivial. And I'm actually as surprised to see this, that you were succeeding it for more general, more high, higher rank gauge group. So I, I would like to know, how, yeah. I, I'm, I would like to study your paper more detail. It's uh, actually the, the, the uh, sort of uh, quite simplifying thing is that uh, here you uh, here uh, the equivalent uh, equivalent uh, uh, action is used. So the uh, everything beco becomes uh, massive, and all the um, everything well, morphisms everything becomes graded. So uh, a, lo a lot of, uh, um, I mean, it's like uh, the sort of finer uh, resolution of this uh, BSQ space that is kind of very, very degenerate. So there's many morphisms that contribute to it uh, and they seem very alike. However, if you turn, turn, turn on the masses, they all uh, acquire different, different additional different gradients or different additional charges. So, uh, so, so it's kind of uh, simplifying thing. Uh -huh. uh, maybe I, I didn't follow, but m let me study your paper again. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, thank you uh, for, for your answers. And, uh, yeah, in fact, you, you guys are in the same building, so you should talk <laughs> with each other, the same institute. So. <laughs> more problem, but right? I, I cannot come to the institute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right. That's the problem these days. But anyway. <laughs> okay, so uh, other questions? Uh, okay, if not, uh, let's thank Dima again. And, and now we have a long, a little bit longish uh, break. 